armored vehicles, the bomb squad, and communications specialists are all out right now on an active scene in Eaton County. It's our top story at five. Thanks for joining us. I'm Lauren Thompson. This is happening in Hamlin Township. That's where a shooting is under investigation tonight, and it's led to a possible standoff. Many residents there are sheltering in place under advisement from the Eaton County Sheriff's Department. This all started around 11 o'clock this morning. It's still happening right now on Five Point Highway between Canfield Road and Freeman. That's just west of Eaton Rapids. Tonight, that portion of Five Point Highway is shut down to all through traffic. We go now live to the scene. That's where 6 News reporter Tony Garcia has been since this whole thing started this morning. He's here for you now. Tony, what more can you tell us tonight? Millions of dollars have been given to sexual assault survivors of former USA Gymnastics doctor Larry Nasser. It's our top story at 6. Thanks for joining us. I'm Lauren Thompson. Sherry is off tonight. After a five-year legal battle, sexual assault survivors of Nasser have reached a settlement for $380 $80 million. USA Gymnastics and the U.S. Olympic and Paralympic Committee are paying the tab. We start tonight with a look at an exhibit at MSU that shows us just how pervasive the internet and social media can be in our lives. From a friend request to a request for money, cyber safety experts say more young adults are meeting people online and aren't aware of the hidden dangers. Well, Lansing police say they've confiscated more than 500 guns just this year and yet still have what they're calling a gun problem. I'm Lauren Thompson. COVID hospitalizations and deaths are on the rise. It's certainly easy for things to get a little out of control. Right. So tonight we're here for you with six tips to help make sure that you don't start the new year in debt. Hi Sherry, yeah, the party is getting started as I'm sure you can hear all around me. The rain is definitely not putting a damper on it. Somebody was heckling me at the game. I never figured out who it was. Who was that? I heard that person mm -hmm. heckling you about it raining at the game. I see her over there somewhere. Yeah, we'll have to track her down somewhere. Mm -hmm. Rounding out our first six minutes, Santa has many magical skills and that means talking to all kinds of children. He speaks every language, including American Sign Language, and kids at this special event in Granger, Indiana were just overjoyed. They call him Signing Santa, and organizers say he created an atmosphere of inclusion for many deaf and hard of hearing people in that area. Organizers say the Signing Santa is now an annual tradition. It's like a page right out of Miracle on 34th Street, isn't it, That's so great, yeah. Speaking of Santa, we're hoping he'll bring our snow because it doesn't look like Mother Nature will. Good morning, Lauren. <laughs> Good morning, Sarah. It's certainly an exciting day out here on campus, and I have Coach Tom Izzo and Lupe Izzo. Tell us about this event today and how exciting this is. Oh, well, we're really excited, and we are excited about the weather, first of all, that we're having another great day for a race, but we, we wanted to have a community event. We, we thought about virtual for a half a second, but it doesn't give the excitement like what we're having here today with all the people out there getting ready to race and, and our sponsors and our community uh, uh, partners or charity partners being here. It's amazing. And the pandemic did mess with this event. It launched and then the pandemic hit. So it is nice to be back. You know, it really is, Lauren. I mean, uh, I think when you have something like this and you've been in the community as long as we have, it really is a community affair. You know, it's not about the legacy. In my mind, it's about our community and the people. And you're going to get a kick out of the little kids. And, uh, and we've done some other things with adaptive sports this year to try to uh, incorporate just every human being here. It's going to be a lot of fun. And not only is this a lot of fun, but it also goes to very good causes. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yes. The, the charities that the Legacy supports through the community is our 501c3 companies that have been established, that are doing great work already. They're vented. So you, they know that they can trust that they'll be able to uh, donate to these charities and the work will continue so that our community can be stronger. So all around, a great event, fun for everybody, accessible to everybody this year. And if you didn't register ahead of time, you can still do that today at Mon Ice Arena. And the weather is fantastic, so come on out down to campus in East Lansing. For now, Sarah, we'll send it back to you. I'm Lauren Thompson, live on MSU's campus.
Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the first Jackson mayoral debate. I'm Lauren Thompson. In a little less than four weeks, residents of Jackson will choose someone to help lead the city for the next two years. It's a big and important job. Okay, we've talked a lot about police and their role in the crime. Um, the next question is uh, about the movement to defund the, peace, the police. There was big debate across the nation last year over this defund the police movement. Now, the phrase does have a lot of different interpretations. It could mean everything from shifting more money to the mental health aspect of crime to cutting or eliminating police officers. So whether you use the phrase or not, how do you envision police funding if you were to take over as mayor? Mr. Wilson, do you have any specific thoughts on this? Hire more police patrol to patrol our neighborhoods and our streets. So you are for spending more money to put more police on the streets? Yes. Councilmember Spitzley, what is your take on the violence? I see you nodding your head there and your plan to address it if elected. Welcome back. President Biden made a stop here in the Great Lakes State on Wednesday, where he delivered remarks to about 300 union auto workers in Detroit. His stop in the Motor City came just days after he signed the new infrastructure deal. He says it will help with the expansion of electric vehicle charging stations across the country. The president also promised it will create good paying union jobs nationwide. Take a listen. Michigan Republicans held a virtual meeting reacting to the president's visits. One of those Republicans was Congressman Tim Wahlberg. He says electrical vehicle plants will force workers to leave the auto industry. When it comes to vaccinations, children as young as 12 can get it now. Soon we could be going down to five. We know that the president recently has issued a vaccine mandate for businesses to require employees to get the vaccine. Do you see that happening for schools and students in the future? I do. Welcome back. Republicans on Capitol Hill are calling the president's federal vaccine mandate an unnecessary government overreach. This week, a group of them teamed up and introduced legislation designed to stop the mandate in its tracks. As Congressman John Molinar told the rundown this week, this is how they're pushing back against the Biden administration's approach. Take a listen. And this, though, does not necessarily ban the mandate itself. It's just banning the funding for it. Well, in effect, what it does is says, you know, OSHA has many responsibilities they should do day in and day out with their work. Uh, but at, at the same time, they should not be given this additional responsibility of implementing a, a vaccine mandate. And uh, that should be really up to employers or states, but not the federal government. There's nothing in the Constitution that allows the federal government and encourages the federal government to do something like this. And so we believe that if we don't fund it, it won't happen.